We love horror movies from the 70s and 80s And we watch them for two days straight And then we go write a book Now we're looking back at every title One at a time in this podcast that we put out monthly Once we've had an episode for every movie It's time to meet up for another shock marathon the red light is red, which means we're recording another exciting episode of the Shock Marathons podcast. I'm Matt Farley here with Charlie Roxburgh. Hello. And Tom Scalzo. Hello. And we're here to discuss Creature from the Black Lake. No article to start that one, Tom, right? It's just plain old creature. Am I right or am I wrong? I'm right, according to the box. Um, just plain old creature. I like it when you avoid declaring it the creature from the Black Lake. I, I, I prefer just creature. You, you keep putting the in before Black Lake. It's just creature from Black Lake. Oh, I apologize. You're adding a the in the wrong place. Unbelievable. Where most people would have at least one the, and probably two, <laughs> these people said, nope. <laughs> <We're> just, <laughs> the key words are creature from Black Lake. That's hilarious. <laughs> wow. That is... Bold. Now, is it is it titled uh, different ways and uh, elsewhere that you've noticed, or is it always just Creature from Black Lake, Charlie? You know what? That That's the only one I've seen. Uh, maybe it's such a good marketable title and so clear that they never had to do an, uh, an also known as, but that's just my guess. I, I just haven't seen it. I mean, do they add a the in any of the uh, titles elsewhere? Oh, That's what I want to know. Um, as far as I we know, know, it's I, just Creature from Black okay. Lake. As far as I know, I mean, the McCulloughs might have demanded that. The McCulloughs are a great <laughs> father and son filmmaking team who we've come to really respect. Um, and this is, uh, do we know, Tom, is this their fir- the first movie that they collaborated on? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Okay. But I'm not entirely sure. They went on to do another great movie called Video Murders that we were big fans of and we'll discuss later. But let's focus on Creature from Black Lake. Opening credits over shots of some guys on a boat in a swamp. (laughs) Crosscut with a college professor who, of course, is teaching a class on Bigfoot. And uh, (laughs) there's nothing nothing more prevalent in horror movies uh, and... And less prevalent in real world in the real world than that, uh, and we get to cross cut uh, a bunch. The guys are back back to the guys in the boat who sense that something is amiss. The a creature's arm attacks them from under the boat, and uh, then we're in the hallway of the college where um, Pahu and his friend are sweet talking the professor about getting the funding to go find Bigfoot. Um, Pahu is instantly likable. He seems to be giggling through his lines. The scene, the scene's outrageously short. Um, we don't even see, um, we don't even see them convincing the pro- professor. They just state that they want to go, and the next thing we see, they're on the way in the van. Nothing is well established in this <laughs> this opening <laughs> scene except that Pahu's great, Tom. <laughs> yeah, that that's really all that. That was the main goal of that whole scene, <laughs> I think. It's the motivation and how they actually are, are getting this trip <laughs> financed is very hazy. And is, is it is it a class project? Like, and it's it's only for one class. So imagine the freedom to say like, "All right, do it a, do it a class project of Bigfoot." Dropping all my other classes, getting some wheels, as Pahu calls it, for free or something from the professor, and going to Louisiana. That's awesome. Pahu is perhaps the greatest character in the history of film. First off, there's his name, Pahu. Second off, it's the actor, Dennis Fimple, who um, who I, I looked it up. I think he was 36 um, when the movie was filmed, and he looked 45. And he's <laughs> he's playing um, a 20-year-old college student, as far as I know. <laughs> All right, Tom? Yeah. Yeah, which is great. Uh, his part, his partner's name is Reeves. Is that right, Charlie? 
His name is Reeves, but you have to remember that Pahu was, if you believe, if you believe him, he was in Vietnam. Good point. So oh, he came right. back and maybe went to college on some kind of uh, military funding or something. So it was quite That's disrespectful right. of me to laugh about Pahu seeking it in education <laughs> later in life. Uh, I I commend him on it, and I apologize to Pahu for uh, for my uh, my gentle ribbing. Anyway, Pahu. Um, next thing we know, they're 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 on the highway heading down to um, do some research. So apparently, they just caught wind of a story of a creature attack, and that was enough to get the school to fund this 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 project. <laughs> yeah. So while they're at a campground, um, Pahu laments about the fact that they won't be able to get French fries, burger, and a coke, and. Um, Here's here's another example that if when when a low budget movie is writing a script, if they bother to just give a a few specific details about a character's likes and dislikes, um, our appreciation for that character grows uh, uh, exponentially. And it, like, who's Pahu? Pahu's a guy who just loves burgers and fries, and we love him for that, don't we, Tom? Yeah, exactly. I mean, thinking back to uh, the last movie we talked about, Capture Bigfoot, I don't know anything about any of those people. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. nothing. And, and I hate everyone of them. <laughs> Except the, the sheriff likes to do impressions, uh. and that's awful. But <laughs> the, it, it's great. Right away, we know we know one great thing about Pahu. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, after a few minutes, I mean, it's like the first thing he yeah. says on the road trip in the van down there. And yeah. let's hand it to the younger McCullough. It was the younger McCullough who wrote it and the older McCullough who produced it, right, Charlie? Correct. Yeah, it's, it's all McCullough Jr. It has, <laughs> it has him written all over it. They him, <laughs> you know? Now, t- uh, Charlie, why don't you tell us, um, why is it that Pahu loves burgers so much? Well, he grew up in an area that was apparently like the chicken capital of America <laughs> and his dad or his family just ate chicken all the time. His dad was in the business. <laughs> they even tried to make chicken jello at one point. <laughs> the guy has had so much chicken that he's just done, you know, and he wants to balance the scales out now by just overdosing on hamburgers. <laughs> and it's it's so great. It it almost feels like a kind of thing that maybe McCullough knew somebody who mm-hmm. ate that many burgers oh, and yeah. decided to put it in a movie or something because it rings, it sort of rings true. As outlandish as it is, it's, it, it's crazy, a funny thing yeah. to pick up. Too yeah. crazy to have been written. So um, Reeves, Pahu's partner, um, much less likable. I don't hate him, but um, I don't like him that much. He's got a bit of an arrogance to him, and uh, he doesn't have any sp- sp- specific foods that he... <laughs> He loves, and therefore, (laughs) I like him less. Uh, Any other descriptions of uh, Reeves you could give us, Tom? Well, yeah, he he he's a little pretentious and um, full of himself. But he's actually the only positive thing is he's actually trying to take this expedition seriously. Like he he's Pahu doesn't care at all. But Reeves is every once in a while he gets his little recorder out and he like makes some notes to himself or something. I mean he doesn't do a very good job of of anything, but he's sort of trying. I'll give him that. He's more focused than Pahu. Pahu is just a, a ball of exuberance and uh, and energy, and he there's no way he can focus on anything. <laughs> <laughs> let alone, no. yeah, let alone a, a you know a, a scientific uh, exploration for Bigfoot. It, it, pretty remarkable that we know the whole backstory with the burgers and chicken, <laughs> but it never comes up once why he was named Pahu. That's a good point. You know? yeah, it's kind of cool. I I, I could have gone either way. It would have been fun to hear. Or also, it's kind of just taken matter of fact. But you, you would think that because even in the town, he meets some people and they say, "Oh, Pahu, that's a funny name." Yeah. But there's no yeah. there's no other explaining. They don't dwell on it. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It was such a good name. And uh, if ever a character fit his name um, perfectly, it was right here. I mean, Pahu. Uh, you hear someone's name Pahu, and you you kind of expect exactly what you get with this character—just exuberance and, and and burgers. It's it's delightful, Tom. 
<coughs> uh, Tom had to cough. I thought he had to <laughs> had something Excuse to me. add. Um, <laughs> so I mean, at the at the campfire, fi- I guess Reeves tells a scary Bigfoot story, um, and then Pahu has to go to the bathroom, and a hippie passes by, and Pahu is freaked out. But then he invites um, he invites the hippie for coffee, and I guess this was um, oh. Then there's comic relief where Pahu says he needs to change his pants. And that, not not great. I could have cut that out, Charlie. You? Yeah, I agree. They make it to town. Pahu's asleep in the the car, and Reeves scares him, which uh, I also <laughs> could have done with that. There's there's a number of moments where Reeves like plays practical jokes on hmm. on Pahu, Tom, and uh, I'm just yeah. like, oh, okay. But I I really gained respect for Pahu there because he took it like a man when he got scared, and he didn't care like he, he he was so cool he's just like oh man why you gotta scare me let's go over there <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know? it, it like, just rolls off cool. yeah it, 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 it engender I, I had some respect and uh i thought hey he, he doesn't dwell on stuff their goal in this town i don't even know what the name of the town is they do name it charlie tom do you know it's like mm-hmm. oil city I okay think. oil city Louis- nice, is it louisiana yeah I think so. Oil City, Louisiana, and somehow they've gotten word that the person they need to talk to is Joe Canton. And their approach to figuring this out is to uh, just, in a willy-nilly sort of fashion, just kind of um, bombard the locals and and, uh, and ask if they know about Joe Canton. And we get a... Um, Aw shucks, funny um, montage of them striking out with the locals that's... Um, that's slightly endearing, but only only slightly. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, at the barber shop, um, there's a guy in the barber chair. He's the the sheriff, and um, and Reeves comes in there to. T- I think is it Reeves who comes in there to talk to him, Charlie? Yes. And the sheriff doesn't want any trouble. He says, "Don't go nosing around, scaring the people about some mysterious monster." And uh, Reeves is unfazed and a bit disrespectful, like Tom said. Uh, Reeves can be a little bit of a, a, a jerk sometimes, and, and he's, I don't like him. But but maybe it's just because, in contrast to Pahu, you couldn't possibly like anyone. And there's a little bit of a North versus South thing going on here. I think Reeves mm-hmm. is anticipating that he's going to get, you know, not well-liked, uh, and he's not going to be very well-liked by these people, and his haircut's a little long. So I think at that time there was a lot of, like, hippie haircut is long. So he's mm-hmm. maybe stealing himself a little bit for the animosity. So that's yeah, that's going on there with Reeves. In a far more entertaining um, scene, we're in the uh, a local diner where um, Pahu orders his trademark uh, food from the waitress, and he adds, uh, "And I'd like to hold your, uh, I mean, hold the tomatoes," which is. Um, a bit unbelievable that uh, he would make that slip, but if anyone would, it's Pahu, right, Tom? Yeah, it it, it works because that's that's the way he is. He barely can contain his thoughts, you know, from coming right out. So uh, he mentions to the woman that uh, he's interested in Bigfoot, um, and someone tells a joke about the creature, um, and the punchline is that the creature was his wife. He like a big buildup about a creature that came and then ha ha ha, turns out it was my wife. Everyone at the diner thinks it's funny except for one man who lashes out, doesn't think it was funny. This man is Joe Canton. And Oh yeah. <laughs> it, it it's what <laughs> their their need to find Joe Canton uh feels very anticlimactic from the beginning. <laughs> uh, Charlie, how did you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's such a small town that as long as Joe Canton was in town that day, you were going to find him. But um, yes, it does It does feel a little anticlimactic. I, I guess, you know, they wanted to find him, but they, they also could have just found somebody else. Just being in the area, like Pahu says, there's tales of Bigfoot in southern Arkansas, northern Louisiana or something. He just wants to, like, they want to be in the a- area where the action is. So, right. so somehow old Joe Canton yeah. uh, slips away, and Pahu loses him. He, he oh, my favorite part's coming up. The old the guy on crutches. Oh yeah, <laughs> tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I don't know if this is one of your favorite parts, you guys, but 
Pahu runs out of the diner <laughs> to chase Joe Canton, who apparently just gave the speed of like a, a great sprinter because for some reason he's gone. No good reason. And uh, Pahu bumps into this, um, you know, large man on crutches. Yes. And it is just a matter of fact man on crutches who is not that upset at Pahu and isn't talked about again and isn't mentioned and they don't show his face and he just hobbles away <laughs> after they bump in after Pahu bumps into him. I love that. <laughs> it's so weird. It's just like it's a matter of fact, another matter of fact thing that happens. That's kind of cool. And it stands out. You know, it could have just been an, a, a guy not on crutches and it would have been much less uh, memorable. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. meanwhile, um, Jim McCullough Jr., is and not- he doesn't knock him over. I'm sorry, I had to say that. He doesn't knock him over. <laughs> You'd expect Pahu is going to knock someone over, but no. Yeah, he just lightly bumps into a guy on crutches. It's amazing. J- Jim McCullough Jr. defies expectations by not having Pahu um, knock the guy over. And also, Jim McCullough Jr. is an actor, and he plays, um, I don't know, maybe we'll find out his... Uh, Oh, Orville. Orville. He plays Orville, Orville. a local boy who was at the barbershop and um, in a scene that feels uh, very much improvised, as if the director said, just walk up to them and tell them you you maybe have info, you know, and he's got to make it up as he goes. And there's a lot of like, um, and ah, yeah. (laughs) They didn't didn't bother with take two, but basically he tells the guys that uh, he can uh, he can provide them with some big Bigfoot information. McCullough is is the best. Tom, tell us tell us about him. As 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 an actor, as an actor and the character and just uh, that. Tell us about that guy. Yeah, I mean, it's he's just uh, you know he he's very he's very local. I guess he's very uh, comfortable with this environment, and he wants to just help them out. Like he's very. He speaks kind of quietly and and slowly, and he's very like, um, I don't know. He, he's kind of engaging. Like you kind of start start to want to talk to him just because he he comes up and he's he's very quiet and he just starts he starts kind of hinting that he knows what's going on. Yeah, he's, he's a little got a coy about it, isn't he? Calm, yeah. Like it, it's a very weird vibe that, but he's definitely got an aura of of interest about him. But he won't talk until uh, they turn off the tape recorder, and Pahu is so impressed. He's like, how did he even know uh, we had it on? (laughs) 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 This is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, Orville provides them with a flashback to back when he was a kid. There was a flat tire. Dad and Grandpa worked on that while uh, young Orville and the ladies went to the side of the road. Orville wandered into the woods. The creature appeared. Mom um, denied any maternal instinct that she might have and just uh, ran in the opposite direction, leaving the the, the baby to deal with the creature. But Dad uh, scooped him up. They piled into the car, drove away, but the tire hadn't been attached, and so the car crashes. Mom and Dad die, and Orville is left to be raised by his grandparents. Uh, Fun little scene, huh, Charlie? Yeah, and uh, Shades of Night of the Demon here by, you a know, flashback with these... story, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Although that that movie might have had flashbacks that were less related to the characters who were <laughs> True. <laughs> having that. But, them or but it is it. a flashback told by a character who actually had no memory. You know, Orville was a, a that's baby. True. He yeah, had no memory true. of it. Right. He was there, but he was tiny. <laughs> yeah. Right. So they go um, to meet Grandpa. And um, Grandpa's mad that they're researching B- Bigfoot. He wants nothing to do with these guys until <laughs> until <laughs> Pahu brings up to Reese, hey, Reese, what about that $25 payment we have for anyone who cooperates? And Reese catches on. He's like, oh, yeah, $25. And Grandpa's eyes just light up. <laughs> and his goal to, to never... Um, talk about uh bigfoot is just out the window for these 25 bucks (laughs) and it's awesome it's very awesome 
Uh, we get some nice country music. Um, is that on the porch? Do they play? They play some country music yep. on the porch. Right? Oh yeah, they play. Yeah. Jim McCullough is a musician as well. He's oh he's the <laughs> triple. Threat. I mean, and he wrote the screenplay. You yeah. know this too. Jeez, Louise. This guy's the best. Yeah. Um, and then they sit back for some. Uh, Reese presses them for some more Bigfoot stories. Um, and what, what, do we go into flashback? Yeah. He's, that it's goes. funny because it's a flashback to the exact porch. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I remember one night I was on this porch and I heard a horrible <laughs> noise and the dogs were making this fierce noise. And he goes and he doesn't, he just kind of like s- sees maybe a shadowy thing and hear, mainly hears uh, and he a shoots very at it. Yeah. scary noise. Yeah. Shoots at mm-hmm. it and it goes away. So then it's time to eat and... um. Uh, the grandpa says, "Hey, boys, do not mention the creature in front in front of grandma. It really gets her worked up." Um, and um, <laughs> <laughs> poor Pahu, Tom, what's on the menu? Tell us. Oh, of course, it's it's chicken. Oh, it's the worst. Um, the mule makes some noise. Pahu freaks out and screams. Was that the creature? And uh, <laughs> just the whole happy vibe is just totally ruined. <laughs> But Pahu can't help it. That is just the kind of guy he is. Of course that's yep. what's going to happen. He hears a noise. He's got the creature on his mind. He blurts it out. And that's why we think Pahu's the greatest of all time. But Grandma's sad. Uh, Grandpa's angry. Just like a Yankee to go back on his word, he says, and he kicks them out. Uh, <laughs> but Orville, who is so just uh, accommodating and laid back, he lets them camp out in the barn. <laughs> <laughs> Which is is great. Um, and then in the barn, um, Charlie, while Reese is dictating into the voice recorder, right? Um, it, what happens? The creature ro- roars, right? Yeah, I mean, I think Pahu is a little scared about staying in that barn because that's the exact like area that the grandpa says that's where I <laughs> had a terrible experience and saw the creature. <laughs> but that in fact does happen. They don't see it, but there's a crazy roar and lucky enough Reeves is rolling his tape recorder at that time so he holds it up in the air and he's able to capture the sound and Reeves it's Reeves right I, I call him Reese sometimes I think it's Reeves yeah, yeah sorry that's okay um uh he's so proud of himself and 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 he goes on to really annoy me when he keeps replaying it just to annoy pa just to scare Pahu um mm-hmm. it's yeah. such a Reeves thing to do you know <laughs> Um, but grandma is super upset inside and, uh, but grandpa, despite, uh, a, did he know that they were still camping in the barn? i I thought that Orville kind of secretly let them do that, but, but he finds out and he's like, Yankees come back, come back in the house. Uh, he's, he's forgiving too. Which, yeah. He knows it's serious. Yeah. Which is kind of good. You know, it's, it's, it's more realistic that he would let them back in after that happened. Um, mm-hmm. So the next day, uh, Reeves is listening to the tape. Pa, who says he wants to go back to Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> the Windy City. <laughs> He's like, I've place. had enough. They go to the diner. There's a couple of girls at the counter making eyes at them. I believe I just fell in love, says Pa, who. Um, <laughs> he's in love with the, the lovely redheaded daughter of the police chief. Right, Tom? Right, yep. And, um... Oh, they play the tape in the restaurant, which is so, it's just like, come on, Reeves. Uh, and that yeah. scares the waitress so much that she spills a, a tray. She's mad. Pahu and Reeves have to leave before they can even get their the burger. So is this the second? Did Re- did Pahu get a burger the first day, or did he just order it and then leave, Charlie? I think he did not get that burger because Joe Canton, before he could get served, Joe Canton, yeah. you know, Two days in a row, the poor guy, all he wants is burger and fries. It's not happening. Um, mm-hmm. And Reeves thinks it's funny, um, like the whole thing. He like likes. He feels so above the townspeople all the time. Yeah, that's annoying. I yeah. really don't like that. And in, in, in any way, he's, he's unlikable. Uh, now, oh, Pahu's double take, though. They're in the van. And mm-hmm. and then the girls that were making eyes at them um, boldly come up to the van to uh, flirt with the guys, and and Pahu does this 
fantastic double take. Charlie, how movie, great was that? Movie magic. Oh. I mean, when they were looking through the lens and they were like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> this is great. You know? Oh, it's so funny. A, a double take is not that easy to do, to do it just right. And he does do it just right. If anyone wants to, you know, see a great, a great double take with the, the right amount of humor, just the right amount of pause and turn back, you know, check the, check out Pahu's move here. Yeah, really great moment. So, That's um, great. When asked uh, what they're going to be doing tonight, uh, what they're doing tonight, the redhead says, we'll just do what comes natural. What She's uh, she's ready to party. And uh, they all agree to meet up at the state campground around 7 p.m. And that's when we find out that uh, Becky is uh, the redheaded Becky and Michelle is her friend. Becky is the, the daughter of the sheriff. And uh, Pahu and Reeves are like, oh, man. But that doesn't stop them from uh, <laughs> from proceeding with, with the party that night. Um, Pahu says, we're out in Mother Nature, want to do what comes natural. <laughs> says Pahu, to, now, Pahu, mind you, Tom, he, he has declared that he fell in love with Becky, but when Becky and Michelle arrive, um, Becky goes for Reeves, leaving um, Michelle for Pahu, and he, right. he just adjusts on the fly and decides that yeah. he's going to, like, he's fallen in love with Michelle now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just he goes with it. He's fine. Another check in the uh, box of th- reasons why we like Pahu. Yeah, and another uh, one is before the girls even get there. That you know the point of this movie, remember, is that <laughs> <laughs> they're supposed to be, you know, researching this monster, but. It, this whole thing is like they're trying to get set up for this date now, and Pahu is like really nervous about that the girls are not going to come. And like for a, a while, you forget that there's any creature involved. It's just like, will will the date work out? That's like all, all that. yeah, yeah. That, that is suddenly the main uh, priority for the viewers. That's all we're worried about. We don't care about the creature. We want to see the date. Reeves, who was is the more focused of the two, he doesn't care. Care. And and likewise with Pahu, so it's just great that everyone involved is just forgotten about the plot and is delighted by this little um, this love interest. And 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 that you know compared to uh, the movie we did uh, last month, where we just see more and more trappers in the woods, uh, this is yeah. so preferable. Mm-hmm. And you got to think if they did get any sort of funding for this trip, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like this is probably not on the on the budget. Not on like, the budget. All like, the, what, beer. the at the first sight of of uh, a girl, like everything <laughs> is thrown out the window. We got to buy some beer and have a party. <laughs> yeah, they're not doing any research, and you would think. I mean, nighttime is when they should be out. You know, recording, uh, waiting to hear a roar and stuff. Uh, yeah. Now it turns out, am I right, Charlie? These girls are in high school. It turns out, right? I I kind of guessed that, and I, I was thinking that that was the reason that Pahu and Reeves went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. They do go to jail. But I'm not sure because it's such a small town, and, and usually in movies the sheriffs in these small towns, especially in the south, can kind of do whatever they want. Yeah. So he could have been putting them in jail. The sheriff could have just because he was mad at them, but he also could have been putting them in jail because they were 17. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, I kind of assume that they were like seniors in high school, though. I just did. Yeah, I, I, I feel like it, they kind of hinted that, but they don't spell it out. Um, but p- before Pahu kisses his uh, his girl, he, he gives a great line of, uh, ready for the north to meet the south, he asks, before kissing her. <laughs> and um, and Reeves, of course, you know, can't let Pahu have a, a moment with his new girlfriend. He has to play the, the tape again. So that the monster's roar happens and um and Pahu's startled, and uh, I I hate Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> um, so meanwhile, Bigfoot is actually heading towards the camp, um, and the redhead girl spots the creature as she's kissing Reeves outside of the tent. They're about to shoot it when the sheriff uh, shows up. Charlie, were were you under the assumption that they just heard it at that point? I could- they share. Yeah, I, I feel could be like, wrong. Yeah, I feel like that was the case. Although it is confusing because I feel like this is a little bit disingenuous here with the the misdirection because they want you to think like the creature's gonna get them, and then it turns out that it's the sheriff okay. father. Okay. But um, in my mind, 
the Bigfoot sounded like he was right there and the sheriff father probably would have seen him unless unless the, the police car scared away the creature or something. I don't know. But they're so close. There's like a, you know, spooky sound. And then five seconds later, the sheriff is the one who's coming into their tent. Right. So it's it's really a case of the filmmakers playing a trick on the audience. Um, yeah. And not uh, and, and the characters not um, acting in a way that um that matches up <laughs> with those, <laughs> with those events it's cl- it's solely an attempt to just scare us uh but we'll mm-hmm. let it go because this movie is so so lighthearted and fun right um so he's mad because his daughter is you know partying with these these jerks he gives them 10 minutes to leave town and d- is it reeves who melts off at him tom well, i think i think so yeah reeves melts off and boom they're in jail uh, meanwhile, Joe Canton is drinking some moonshine in his shack. He hears Bigfoot outside and talks to his dolls about how he swears he heard he heard something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a, 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 a short and potentially unnecessary scene, but we'll let it go. Uh, Bigfoot tries to get into the shack, and Joe shoots a couple times. Next morning, yes. Um, I just want to say that I, I really like this guy. I mean, he, he this actor. He was in a lot of stuff. But he's oh, a yeah. pretty awesome wild woodsman living in a yeah. shack, Bigfoot guy. Harry, is he Harry? Yeah. yeah, I mean, like unshaven and just like his his language, his look, everything is like perfect. Yeah. Much he's respect to that of, guy. He's in a ton of westerns. Okay, yeah. He he was in uh, Once Upon a Time in the West, and like he's in right. a lot of good. good... That's right. wild. So he's he was kind of a name, and then yeah. then he's out in the woods just working for the McCulloughs. That's amazing. And he gave it his all. <laughs> good, yeah, good point. Yeah. All right. So the next morning they're in jail, and uh, Pahu, as always, um, happy as can be. You you can't uh, take the good spirit out of Pahu, and he's reading uh, the graffiti on the wall, having a good old time. Um, and mm. Joe Canton comes to the station to report that he saw the creature. Sheriff doesn't want to hear it because Joe's been drinking, and Joe, Joe <laughs> passes out, and he's put into the cell with Pahu and Reeves. So this is this is what they've been waiting for, and it finally happens. Um, they get some good eyewitness accounts from from uh, Joe about the creature, but before they can get too many details, the sheriff releases Joe, and then he agrees to let the guys out as long as they promise to leave town. Of course, they don't promise. They follow Joe out of the station. Um, Pahu has some trouble with the keep off grass sign. What what was that? Yeah. Joe? Well, it was a little comedy bit. Uh, for some, I don't know why they decided to do this. It, it really must have been a, um ad-libbed thing. But there's a little keep off the grass sign that uh, Reeves like bumps into, and then he hands it to Pahu, and Pahu doesn't know what to do with it because it, doesn't want to stick in the ground right, so he just kind of like leans it against the steps. It's <laughs> sort of like a weird little uh, visual aside. gag, yeah. like a, a Mr. Bean kind of little joke aside thing. It, it feels made up, but it's Pahu, so you know, it's kind of like Pahu can yeah. get away with anything. Things yeah. that would annoy me in other movies, I'm delighted by because it's done by Pahu. Yeah, you know what would have been good? Pahu and Joe Canton teaming oh, up yeah. and to be like uh, you know in the sequel or something and then the, let, let Reeves stay at college <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, do you notice Pahu had his name written on the back of his shirt yeah <laughs> fantastic that was so cool. great um, so they go they have a brief talk with, with Joe and then um, then they go deep into the woods and um I guess they're setting up for the big the big showdown, I guess, just randomly. They're like, this random spot is going to be... Does Joe direct them to that spot or what, Tom? I don't even know. I don't really know either. It's, it's, yeah. it's pretty hazy. That is that where he saw him the night before? Is that, is that what it was? Yeah, well, remember that time he... Well, no, not the night before because that was at his, uh, his cabin. But he says, hey, boys, this one time I went deeper into the woods than I've ever gone... And oh, there right, were all right, these right. carcasses that had bites taken out of them. And then he says, like, you go to this path and you keep going a little farther. And so he he, yeah. he basically told them where it was, but he didn't say, you know, I advise you to go there. He just 
<laughs> and I'm a little right. su- I'm a little suspicious that they could even get there based on such vague directions, but I'll let it go. Um, Pahu lashes out at, at Reeves about how dangerous this is. I mean, he's been through a lot in Nam while while Reeves is probably lallygagging around Canada. Yeah, before before we move on, <laughs> this is by far my least favorite part of the movie. I it I felt like a five minute chunk of the movie had been was missing. I I had to rewind this two times because I couldn't believe when the fighting started that they were angry at each other. They're, they met Joe Canton. They know where to go to find Bigfoot. They're pretty happy, right? Then they're setting up their tent. Then the next cut, basically, the next cut at night, Re- Pahu's cooking beans. Reeves come out of his tent and says, are you going to save me some of those beans? And he says, I might. And he says, I don't think you know how dangerous it is here. And then Pahu starts talking about Nam. And, it is, it, and then he says, why don't you go back? It is unbelievable. These guys have never fought in the movie. There was not the slightest bit of ramp up to this or hint. Now, Charlie, I would um, say that, yes, it's pretty amazing that out of the blue they're fighting like this. Mm-hmm. However, you have to keep in mind Pahu has the emotional maturity of, of an infant. And it is quite possible that just he's suddenly sulking. You know, he just out of the blue, he's eating his beans and he's just suddenly overwhelmed with, with a, a general malaise and, and it just takes over because... You know Pahu, he can his his mood can fluctuate. Of course, right. it's probably not that, but that's one way you could write it off. It's possible that beans instead of hamburger for dinner <laughs> has really <laughs> has made him super mad. <laughs> but you know, it, it's super sudden and it doesn't really affect the movie positively. They they could have just been attacked by Bigfoot without having had this fight. It, I don't know. I I did have to watch it a couple of times to see what I was was missing. It was it was it, weird. yeah. It was tacked on and and yeah. unnecessary. Tom, yeah, it was unnecessary. It, I it, I I got the feeling like like Pa who was just he was, you know like you said he hasn't gotten his hamburgers at all, but he was <laughs> he was determined to make do with these beans, and he was like he's kind of like going to town on them right he's eaten pretty intensely yes and then it feels like reeves like kind of calls attention to the fact that he's eating so much of the beans (laughs) and you know it's like pahu you maybe in his mind like this was going to be like a exciting adventure with girls and hamburgers and and now he's he's in the woods with beans and and reeves and, and a monster and it's no fun and then reeves is is picking on the way he's eating and it's just too much yeah maybe it's been building up reeves is a big like, old jerk yeah and i feel like when reeves says that that he's almost saying like i don't want you to alert the creature to our presence or something mm. with the way that you're cooking and eating all these beans i felt like that was hinted at too and reeves also states um Seemingly out of the blue, that the creature's been circling the camp, and I don't, <laughs> I don't know how he knows this. Yeah, uh, but that that gets uh, Pahu a little bit worked up, uh, and then they try to spot the creature. Um, they snap a photo of a of a big footprint, and then uh, it's a little hazy for me what was going on here. But I guess the beast knocks out Pahu and drags him ar- away, or possibly drags him into the tent. Or drags him and then goes into the tent to destroy it. Uh, Tom, do you know what happened there? It, it's really confusing. I'm not <laughs> sure either. Okay, some some sort of action happens in the dark, and it's it's pretty it's much pretty impossible dark. to make make and any. Somehow sp- the guys are separated at that point. Reeves mm-hmm. uh, returns from the van to help, but the tent's destroyed. Where could Pahu be? Uh, Reeves calls for Mayday on the radio. Uh, no success getting an open line. Finally, an authority figure gets the message, perhaps too late, as Bigfoot crashes through the van window with his arm and attacks Reeves, just like in, um, which one? Uh, you know, the, the Crazy Wanda movie. Night of the Demon. You know that arm through the window thing? That was. A, oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the the van rolls down a hill, um, freeing Reeves from the creature's grasp. Uh, Bigfoot starts attacking the van. He turns the van over. It continues to roll. That's some good, you know, for a low-budget movie, they got to destroy a van. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 
Um, with one arm injured, Reeves tries to shoot the creature. Um, he seems to hit it, and the van explodes. Are those two uh, things connected, or what, Charlie? No. Um, the van was leaking gas, and they show a little like loose wire that's going like click, click with electricity. Okay, okay. And that causes it to explode, and then Reeves kind of jumps away from the van. And Reeves unexpectedly um, becomes like a survivalist, uh, pulling out a, a knife from a holster on his hip and screaming, <laughs> come on, almost <laughs> almost taunting the creature in a way that he's a city boy. I thought uh, he's a changed man right here, Tom, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what happens. Life in the swamp, man. <laughs> Instantly <laughs> changes you. Kill or be killed. So then he ends up stabbing pa- poor Pahu, <laughs> thinking that Pahu is Bigfoot. Um, <laughs> then they struggle to get out of the woods together as the sun comes up. Uh, Joe Canton and the sheriff show up in the police car and collect the guys. And um, that's pretty much the end of their adventure. Now we're in the waiting room where Reeves is you know he's plagued with guilt he's in the waiting room with canton and the sheriff what a threesome right there reeves and the sheriff and and joe canton just hanging out Mm -hmm. (laughs) canton's trying to cheer up reeves and and after after reeves has done battle with the creature i feel like he's earned some respect with those guys right yeah especially the sheriff well except that moments later Canton gets set off by something that Reeves said, I think, and and he storms off and says he's gonna make a rug out of that creature, right, Tom? Well, I, he wants to kill it. He so wants, it's yeah. not that Reeves get annoyed reven- him. Okay, okay. No, I think I he wants to get yeah. revenge for humanity. Man, yeah. man versus beast. Beast has got a couple like knockouts here. Yeah, and if the fact that it was Pahu that's so seriously injured. Everyone just loves him. I think you know without. Yeah, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. It just, like how how could you destroy Pahu? I know. So Canton's gonna turn that thing into a rug, and that perhaps that's a a sequel that's is yet to be made. But um, we get to to see Pahu on uh, on the table on on a bed in the hospital. He is in horrible shape, wrapped in bandages, covered. He's covered in a uh, plastic to like. <laughs> Like like a boy in a bubble situation, mm. um, but the nurse um, rolls the plastic up so that Reeves can visit with him, and and Reeves makes this heartfelt bedside speech with uh, such lines as "You gotta make it," because well, we got a lot of things to do. He's crying. Is there something I could do? Something I could get? <laughs> 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 Does someone want to say it, Charlie? Hamburger, fries, <laughs> and a Coke. From his, it was such a setup. Oh, for that such line, a setup for that line. Fire. But uh, I, I love but it. But it's great. But it's great. Yeah. I mean, the whole movie is that. That's my. That's like the main thing in the movie is Pahu's love of hamburgers. <laughs> even more. <laughs> even more than his love of, of pretty girls. It's probably the hamburgers oh, for sure. Oh, no and uh, it paid off. It paid off. I'm not mad at you, says Pahu. I'm just mad we got to start this whole dang project over again. It's out there. We got to find it. Pahu, let's face it, like Charlie just said, his main, uh, all he cares about is, is his food. And he was he was not that into the, um, he wanted to go back to Chicago midway through the movie. And Reeves stabbed him <laughs> after the creature. After the creature almost killed him, then Reeves almost kills him. He's 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 in a protective bubble, and he's ready. He just wants to recuperate so he can uh, go out there. They lock hands and exits and truck stops. Plays on the soundtrack. <sighs> Movie over. Oh, wow! Nice ending. Who wants to give a big picture review? Tom, come on, tell us how great this. Well, I don't want to uh, lead the witness. Tell us your <laughs> thoughts on this movie. No, oh, it is great. It's it's so fun. I mean, I love I love that at the end that there's so much uh, like when like you said in the waiting room when the sheriff is kind of like, you know, he's he's shifted from get out of my town, you Yankees, to like trying to be like a friend and he's really cared about these guys. They've and, been through a lot. Yeah. Pa, they've been through a lot. And like Pahu's like the this, this symbol, you know, of, <laughs> of courage. And it, it's just amazing that, um, I like that transition from, you know, from what the, from further, they first get into the town to the end, you know, they're, they're like 
outsiders who are trying to stir up trouble and then by the by the end they're like they're like the carrying the banner of let's go kill the monster and everyone is on their side yeah. and in reality we have to um perhaps note um all they've done is is mishandled the <laughs> the situation <laughs> where they're stabbing each other and uh and just doing a, a horrible job of of, of of either catching or or finding evidence of Bigfoot. I guess they're Got finding it. evidence in, in all their, their scars, but yeah. Got a van exploded <laughs> like, to add to the budget from their school yeah. trip. Let, yeah. let me my big picture thoughts on this movie is be like Pahu. I, I need to remind myself daily that um, that this world is a is a magnificent place, and there's so much to be wondrous and and excited about. Just like Pahu is, he loves uh, he loves burgers so much that it, he just gets excited about it. He does double takes when he sees a pretty girl, and and you know if you're gonna be like Pahu, you're gonna make some mistakes because you're just overflowing with exuberance and occasionally you're gonna scream out was that the monster in front of an old lady who you're not supposed to say that in front of but that's a small price to pay to to be the type of guy who will inspire joe canton to go go back out to catch the beast uh, this this character uh l- dear listeners is unbelievable a great great guy and and great performance and great writing uh, equal equal parts well i may mm-hmm. i'll give the performance a little bit more because um a little bit more of it but really it's well written and it's well thought out of you know uh, mccullough knew what he was doing charlie big picture yeah um love pahu he's the main <laughs> character probably the main character we talk about from all of the movies we've watched so far yep mm-hmm. Wouldn't you guys say? Yeah. yeah. And a close uh, second, also written by McCullough, is um, Del Vecchio from, yeah. from Video yeah. Murders. And the other thing we have to talk about is um, it's it's McCullough writing, but um, this guy, Joy Hulk Jr., right. is the director of this movie. His dad owned, was a co-owner, I think, of a couple hundred theaters in the uh, South. Interesting. Uh, drive-in places and... Mm. and uh, so that was how he, Joy Hawk Jr. like got into the business, um, and his dad produced, I think, some pictures like going back to the fifties, I think. Yeah, um, like Night of the Bloody Ape, I think, and way long ago. Yeah, and it's pretty like cool that. to think of this um, sort of alliance of Southern filmmakers, and bo- a lot of these same people, including Dennis Fimple, also worked with Charles B. Pierce, hmm. who right. we like. So this is like there's like ten. 15 key people all around in the South at this time who were making drive-in pictures, being in each other's movies. And uh, this movie is really part of it. I think some people say this is the best Bigfoot movie from the 70s, at at least in the top five, three or five. But some people even think it's their favorite, and we really like it. And, yeah, I would say given those facts that you gave me, um, it it feels like a homemade movie in many ways but it also has that little a bit of professionalism that makes it much more bearable than than a lot of uh completely homemade movies and and it's it's profession it's made by professionals who who were also regional though so maybe that's the reason why it's got the best of both worlds it's it's in no way is it too um too well done you know but yeah just yeah. enough Except for uh, like the, the cinematographer, I, I think a lot of the ease of watching this movie comes from how awesome uh, Dean Cundy is, a uh, cinematographer who mm. shot Halloween. Oh wow, yeah. Um, so and he's a real pro. He's one of the main, you know, cinematographers of the probably like eighties, nineties, mm. and to up. I mean, I guess up till till now. But uh, so many movies we we like, um, big movies. He he did and. Um, it really, it really is kind of a well, well shot movie. Um, I, I enjoy uh, a lot of the. There's a lot of wider shots of the people and of the town. That mm-hmm. um, it's not everything's not too close up. It's it's calm. It's this movie is a, is a nice movie to have on. Really you know? good, yeah. Highly recommended. Yeah. Um, find this movie, Creature from Black Lake, and watch it because it's 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 spectacular. And and this Pahu character, I mean. People should be wearing T-shirts with uh, with his face on it. I think. 
and it's supposed to come out on Blu-ray <laughs> next year. I don't oh, know if you guys wow. have heard that, but wow. if, if we if we watch that, it's going to be a whole whole other experience. Yes. It's going to yeah. be pretty crazy. It's going to be beautiful. That's, yeah. Some, some of those opening scenes in the swamp are pretty cool too. Yeah. Uh, there might be some later on that are too dark to really appreciate than the the one we watched. Yeah, well, I bet you the Blu-ray version will uh, will fix those up too. So that's that's exciting. Um, and so, th- <clears throat> historically speaking, this movie is just a great introduction to the McCulloughs, uh, a, a couple of filmmakers. I don't know what their current status is, but uh, I'd love to track them down. Anyone who knows either of the McCulloughs, um, tell them to to get contact us uh, via shockmarathons.com. Shock memories. Um, this movie stands out, like we say, as an all-time classic. But for me, it's just Pahu, just just his face. I think of this movie, I just think of Pahu's great, happy face. Tom? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of moments that I remembered from the first time and that I will continue remembering. I mean, it really is not boring, really, at any point. Like, the dinner when he shouts out, <laughs> is that the creature? You know, the, the waiting at the camp for the date to start. Um, even like the time in prison with Joe Kent and like all those kind of <laughs> moments, they're great moments. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not like it just fades away the finish, the moment you stop watching it. It really holds up pretty well. It really it, does, Charlie. It's like it's a nice balance of plot and character with all that stuff. Yeah, because some some movies like some parts of Capture Bigfoot, it's just the plot of what what are these guys doing? They're chasing Bigfoot, but here you're like, okay. Joe Canton and Pajo and Reeves are also after the creature, but they're awesome characters. And you throw them together into a jail cell, and it's like you yeah. got both things going on. Um, right. So, I, yeah, I think the characters really, um, it goes to show you, you'll remember a movie a lot better if you have, a, have some awesome characters. Yeah, we knew. We knew as soon as we started watching that this, this movie was something special. It's not something that crept up on us. We knew from, from moment one just... Just watching Pahu walk down um, the the hallway in the college is like wow. There's something about this guy that's uh, not your run of the mill character. And and compare him to Reeves. I mean, if the if the Pahu character was just like another Reeves, this movie would go down several several pegs. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I guess you need a straight man to go with your um, Pahu character. But I don't know. Maybe Reeves could have been. Slightly more likable. <laughs> what do you think, yeah. Charlie? Yeah, maybe. I I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe yeah. I, I guess he could have. He he maybe was a little bit of a sign of the times, like hippies versus regular folk, and you know there might be a little bit of that seventies like animosity am- among the um, different generations going on there. I yeah. don't know. He's not that great. Yeah, but. Uh, one thing that you can kind of kind of say, not to read too much into it, but you got at the start, right, you got the sheriff who doesn't like the Yankee boys. He's very prejudiced against the Yankee boys, going to come stir up trouble. And, and then you got Reeves who's like, you know, he wants to investigate this thing, but he, he definitely has uh, an opinion about these, these Southerners and he doesn't seem to have much respect for them. And then you got Pahu in the middle who just loves everyone, you yeah. know. And then mm-hmm. by the end, everyone kind of comes, comes around sort of to appreciate, like Reeves kind of appreciates this world a little bit more. And he's much nicer right by the end. Yeah, it's like and, all the characters yeah. were on varying sides of Pahu. Right. And by the end, they have all met in the center that is Pahu's view <laughs> of, of life. It's going to start a cult. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a comeuppance for Reeves because... Clearly, he he's revealed, despite his um, sudden survivalist mode moment, it's clear he's not a very good survivalist because the first thing he does is stab his his part his friend, you know. So he he doesn't doesn't do a good job. He's uh, he's out of his element, and uh, he's been humbled. So I'm I'm happy to see that. But ladies and gentlemen, wow, um, creature from Black Lake it greatly influenced our lives. Um, and uh, and any T-shirt manufacturers out there, uh, you know, look into uh, making Pahu T-shirts. I'll buy one. 
<laughs> yep. Yeah. Here, here. You know, yeah. Charlie. One one funny thing is like we we nominated or no this movie won for best box cover because we love it right. Oh yeah. I remember good. loving it a lot yeah. too. So I was looking Fantastic. at it today and then I realized that Ralph mm-hmm. McQuarrie, who did the Star Wars posters, drew that yep. thing. Wow. Yep. Before he worked on Star Wars and he used to draw posters. I read for Joy Hulk Jr.'s dad who owned all like sub distributed movies through all his different movie theaters that he owned some B movies. So they had access wow. to a lot of uh, <laughs> talented uh, people, maybe just like moments before they, they broke to, to be too big for them. Yeah. That's a good way to be. All right. Well, um, I guess that's it. Any other thoughts, Tom, did you have something or are you good? No, good. All right, Creature from Black Lake, excellent film. Check it out. Shockmarathons.com is our uh, website. And this is the final episode before our uh, uh, exciting Q&A episode. So last chance to get questions in. Uh, we have at least 10 right now, and we'd, we'd love to have more questions about movies we've seen uh, or personal questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh dating advice you know why not you know uh we might depending on how um wacky you get we might pretend we didn't get certain questions but give it give it a try send it out there let's have a fun uh shock marathons q a party uh next month for tom and charlie this is farley saying good night